Welcome back. Now, if you had any doubt that the alternative media has reached the tipping point when it comes to dominating the mainstream news, White House front group Media Matters has vowed to take down alternative media sites like Infowars and DrudgeReport.com in their quest to do Obama's bidding by influencing the media. Media Matters is the closest thing to actual state media. They set talking points for MSNBC and CNN after meeting with Obama advisors every Tuesday to conduct a weekly strategy call with the White House. One employee bragged about how Media Matters works with the White House to control big media networks, saying of MSNBC, we were pretty much writing their prime time, but then virtually all the mainstream media was using our stuff. Here, Media Matters thinks they're just so amazing as they drive the White House's message. Here, Media Matters thinks that they are so amazing as they drive the White House's agenda. Now, the Obama administration has made use of entertainment outlets in the past to push their agenda. They, they're trying to convince all the brain-dead, entertainment-obsessed zombies that Obama and his policies are trendy and cool, but they, they already know that they have lost the minds of the people who really want the hard-hitting news, and that's why Media Matters has set off with this plan and they're going uh, into the offense. So I'm sure stay tuned for even more personal attacks by Rachel Maddow and her ilk to um, attack our credibility. But actually, at first that kind of worried me, but now I realize it's actually a really, really good sign that we are having a huge effect and we're definitely a thorn in the side of the Obama administration. But as the alternative media is on the rise, you do want to be on the lookout for Operation Mockingbird types setting themselves up as the alternative media instead of their true purpose. Now, whistleblowers are voicing skepticism about the new media organization that's being established by Glenn Greenwald and billionaire PayPal owner Pierre Omidyar. Omidyar is said to have invested a quarter of a billion dollars in the operation in response to rising concern about press freedoms in the United States and around the world. But whistleblower Sebel Edmonds reports that NSA whistleblowers are highly skeptical of this project and its stated objective. And as WikiLeaks points out, it is outrageous that PayPal would be interested in establishing an alternative media organization when it moved to shut down Julian Assange and his organization by cutting off their ability to receive donations over the internet. Now, back in June, prior to the arrangement with Omidyar, Greenwald said that parts of the Snowden cash would never see the light of day. Now, the corporate media, they said that Greenwald was making this assertion uh, based on what James Clapper had said. He accused the media of exploitation and harming national security. But however, according to Edmonds and NSA whistleblowers, the Snowden documents contain information about the relationship between major U.S. financial institutions, including credit card companies and PayPal and the NSA. This is, at least in part, the reason the cash is untouchable, according to Edmonds. Now, Greenwald has really turned his position as the sole purveyor of the Snowden documents into quite the lucrative business. He's got a billionaire in his back pocket while Snowden is staying in hiding for sacrificing his life to get all of this information out to the public. And so far, he has remained silent, but we'll have to see as the story progresses if Snowden has anything to say about you know, if Greenwald is kind of holding these documents hostage and if Omidyar, they're kind of in collusion to release the documents that aren't going to shed light on the fact that PayPal has really, really been uh, connected to the CIA. That article is up on Infowars.com by Kurt Nimmo. It goes into even greater detail of PayPal's close ties to NQTEL and the CIA. And this is just the beginning of this story. We're going to go uh, much more in-depth next week, and we hope to have an interview with SIBO. So, but those are the people that you're supposed to trust to bring you fair and balanced news. But it's not just the journalists that are being paid to turn a blind eye to the NSA. It's also our elected representatives that we are supposed to trust to have our best interests at heart, especially when it comes to deciding the constitutionality of the NSA's spy program, 
Well, new reports show that every member who sits on the NSA Oversight Committee has received campaign contributions from the top 20 largest intelligence companies in the United States. Now, amid the NSA's scandals, that committee has denied stricter reform attempts to the NSA programs, and instead, they propelled legislation that's aimed at restoring their trust by the American public. Now, the report shows donations amount to over 3.7 million from 2005 to 2013, which pretty much means that they've been being paid off for quite some time to turn a blind eye. Well, I guarantee you that we are not being paid off by the NSA and pushing the Obama administration's agenda. You can continue to get your truthful news here at InfoWars.